So hopefully you'll agree. A beautiful little piece. Really something that you could actually play for a group of people or an audience and expect to stand up as listenable music. That said, and as I mentioned in the intro, this piece definitely has some clear technical specificities to make it etude worthy. We're going to get through our preliminary observations and then talk over what those specificities are in the details section. Well, the most notable initial characteristic of the piece is the time signature, 6-8, which is hardly an uncommon time signature, but we definitely see it less than something like 4-4 or even 3-4. Remember that 6-8 is a compound time signature, meaning that we have groupings of three beats, uh, in this case two groupings, and we tend to feel the musical lilt of the time signature more in terms of those larger three-beat groupings than in terms of the individual beats. Well, that's going to be an important bit of knowledge to keep in mind when working out this left hand in particular. As with the piece from our last lesson, this piece has a tempo marking of andante, an initial dynamic of piano, and even a similar editor-included marking of with pedal, which is not in the original publication, but has been added by me after the fact to confirm a general assumed performance practice. We have a couple of other things written in here at the beginning that, in fact, were included in the original publication. First is this expressivo marking, which, as you might guess, means expressive or play expressively. Um, and then also this sostenuto marking, which means sustained. So this is basically the old school way of saying use pedal, but I still thought it was worth it to add a more specific modernized instruction for that. Other than that, hopefully you can see that we have a fairly consistent texture throughout this piece with some variation in the middle, and this consistency is what we're primarily going to be focusing on, particularly in the left hand. So let's check it out. So, once again, a really pretty piece. I actually included this piece in an article I put together exhibiting 10 beautiful and relatively easy minor pieces, which you can check out on the Liberty Park music blog if you're so interested. But the key features of this piece are this constantly moving left-hand accompaniment um, and this mournful, very clear melody playing out over top of it. But really, we're combining several of the techniques we've worked on so far throughout this course. So in a way, due to its relative ease and its aesthetic appeal, this is something of a reward piece. Now, the main technique we're working on here is bringing out that nice, clear melody over this constantly moving left hand and trying to give said left hand some shape and definition without intruding on the right hand material. So let me play the left hand by itself for a bit here. Uh, watch and listen. You can almost hear this as being an individual part by itself. To be sure, it's missing the melody, but if you heard somebody playing that, and only that, you'd still probably think, wow, that's awfully pretty. And that reaction is due to the combination both of how it's composed um, and how I'm playing it. Now that first trait is obviously set in stone and there's not much I can do about it. But in terms of how it's performed, that we have much more control over. There are several things you can do to keep yourself um, it going and to help yourself in this pursuit. Now, one, make sure you really know the notes and are really comfortable with relocating your fingers and hand positions. You'll notice that there's not any actual finger markings marked on the score for the left hand position. That's because um, we wanted to give you uh, a little bit of flexibility concerning what fingering is going to work best for you. For example, I tend to start off one way and then I tend to slip into using more of a 5-4-2-1 fingering 
a bit like that, but that might be a little bit awkward feeling until you've gotten a little bit more comfortable and confident with using that fourth finger. So the finger number choices are a little bit left up to you. Make sure, and this is my big, big recommendation, big hint here, do write in your finger numbers that you've come up with and make sure you stick to them. Well, confidence with your movements is possibly the most important tool you have. So if you're confident about knowing the notes and knowing how to get to them with your fingers, that's going to be a huge advantage. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.